and unfortunately I've got to look at the security settings here. <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay, so uh, okay, and, uh, start the video. Okay. So if we can uh, take a minute to sort of turn our attention inwards, the silence, the stillness, the peace. just being here. no issue whatsoever with whatever is appearing to us. Resting. Resting as this effortless awareness. which is mind-blowing. We don't need to maintain a personal story about anything in just being here together as, as one. We don't need to have a storyline about ourself or about our experience. In and as awareness, which is the reality, the reality of our experience. 
all is well. whatever appears to us. It doesn't affect us, doesn't hurt us. As awareness, as consciousness, as reality. In the morning, it may be sunny. In the afternoon, rainy. Same, same. I am not subject to that which appears to me. I am the flow. I am the gold in the gold ring. I am the gold in the gold bracelet. I am the water in the wave. I am the silence in the melody. I am the creator in the creation. I am the reality of existence. I am the formless in all form. And I am the transparency. Of all appearances. Here I am hearing these words. I perceive sensations within the body.
and yet I am not subject to that which I hear, nor am I subject to the sensations that I perceive. Like water is not subject to the form it may take, it's not subject to the wave. because I am not defined by that which appears and disappears. Only when I choose to define myself as a, a person, as a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, as a body-mind. Only then do I experience the impression of the limitation. What is it to be engaged and yet completely disengaged? Sometimes the spiritual journey is spoken of as going to the top of the mountain, but then coming back down to the village, coming back down from the top of the mountain. Initially, we are in the village, subject, subject to conditions. under the influence of the belief of being a, a person struggling trying to achieve certain goals trying to avoid suffering, trying to, to please. And not succeeding at it. Then we come upon the path, the path of causeless peace, the path of reality. And we start exploring our beliefs our feelings, our emotions, our reactions, our actions. We come upon the teachings, the Dharma. And 
via grace, we climb the mountain. Along the path, we have many understandings about ourself, about life, about love, about truth. We reach many plateaus as we're climbing the mountain, plateau after plateau after plateau. Until we realize the one reality. the absolute, the causeless peace. But we don't stay at the top of the mountain. Is life happening? friends, co-workers, family, all sorts of events unfolding in our life, around us, in our culture. And here we are in the midst of it all. The village, What is it to be fully engaged? And yet, disengaged. It is said that a hundred percent engagement is a hundred percent disengagement. They meet. They meet in this. Oneness, recognizing everything as yourself, living, thinking, perceiving, acting, thinking out of this understanding of no separation, no separation. Everybody Everyone is your brother and sister, your father and mother, your very self. The entire world is your body.
There is no one and nothing that is apart from you. It's effortless. Because in, in love, in oneness, in understanding, there is no effort. Like the sun shines onto the surface of the pond, there is no effort. But the surface of the pond gets warm and reflects the sunlight. There is no effort. Giving and receiving meet each other in this effortlessness. There is no personal self. It is a mind impression that is prevalent in our uh, planetary culture. The illusion of personhood overlooking the reality of love, of a wholeness, of oneness. What is it, this very moment? What is it? What is it that knows? What is it that is that does not come and go. That is not a fleeting mind impression. What is it that you know beyond anything else? That cannot be given to you or taken away from you. which is available to you. Twenty-four seven, beyond any eclipse, beyond any doubt.
that is nameless and formless that cannot be grasped in any formulation. And yet, all formulations refer to it, demonstrate it. Can we explore living? Fully engaged and fully disengaged. living exploration of that, not some conceptual understanding at the, to dive into it, dive into it and, and die into it. So, if you have any questions, please make sure you unmute yourself. And you're welcome to turn on your video. So, any, any questions?
Any questions? Hello, Patrick. Hi, Magdi. I have a question. Um, my, my question is about decision again. Um, I, I struggle with my job. And um, one of the struggles is with um, a similar kind of thing a couple weeks ago when some immature people interrupted our meeting. I teach ninth through 12th graders and I deal with that type of immaturity all the time. And, and oftentimes when I'm, when I'm at peace and in, in meditation and in life in general, I feel like maybe I'm supposed to stay there till, till I get the lesson, till I learn my, till I learn the lesson. And other times I think maybe the lesson is to make a decision that I don't need that anymore. And so I struggle with that all the time because this job kind of came to me as a gift. Um, at, at least it seemed like it came as a gift to my prayers. And so I, I feel like I'm in a holding pattern waiting for waiting for a sign from the universe to tell me that it's time to move on and other times I wonder if the lesson is that I need to trust in my intuition and 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 realize that maybe that's not the place for me to be and make the decision to move on yeah and, and it can be both as well meaning You you deal with the situation. Here we are dealing with the situation out of hopefully out of love and caring and intelligence, but the best you can. You know, no, we're not trying to be superheroes. Uh, but of course, it's more harmonious to deal with the situations out of a higher inspiration than out of the lower inspiration, lower inspiration being self-defense, self-aggrandizement, but self-protection, imposing one's personal will. The higher inspiration would be to have an understanding that there really are no issues, that this is just the unfolding of the universe through all sorts of activities, through all sorts of expressions and to sort of embrace it all and, and operate, make your decisions for the common good. You have many students that you're tending to, you have a certain, certain curriculum to do, a certain teaching to share, but above all, you know, you're also sharing you know, the presence presence, love, intelligence, wisdom. So you're sharing that too. It's simultaneously, you're also listening to the inner voice that's saying, wait a minute, uh, do, I, do I feel, yeah, do I feel a certain 
interest, passion. engagement with this or is it basically there are a lot of doubts and questions you know so there are doubts and questions then we 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 look at that too we don't ignore that we we take that into consideration um and there are certain doubts that arise within us from our intuitive realm from the our deeper uh, uh, understanding about there's only one understanding it's always about peace and happiness and uh, this intuition uh, arises to us as you know, a certain feeling about things which is uh, different from circumstances provoking within you certain certain temporarily feelings. Of course, you know, someday maybe there is issues within the classroom, and that's very particular uh, effect. It's going to have particular effect on your body mind. But I'm talking about a, a deeper intuition. Than, than the what you experience due to a certain particular situation during during the day or during the week. Uh, and at the same time, there is the the understanding that there are no accidents where you are and where where whatever you're experiencing is is meant to be. But it includes it includes. Uh, your your inner voice, your inner intuition that is also not an accident that may be saying, well, wait a minute, uh, uh, I'm not I'm not sure that this is, you know, this is my path. Now, you know, in, in life, we make some compromises uh, just due to food, shelter, and clothing situations, you know, the need to, uh, pro, you know, provide for the body-mind. So we, you know, we say, okay, you know, it's, that works, you know, that works. It's not ideal, but it's okay. I don't mind, you know, I'm okay with that. And it may, uh, it may grow on you. you know, it may... I found that, uh, you know, throughout my life, I've always uh, sort of been yes to whatever was unfolding in my life. I've said yes, so I said yes to whatever is unfolding, and and sometimes then it 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 gets, you know, the the path gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Although I'm saying yes, I also feel that, okay, this is, all right, I said yes, fine, no problem. I'm, I can work 10 hours a day, all right. A year later, it's 12, now it's 14. Now I'm getting phone calls at night about, you know, having to do this. So uh, the direction unfolds in such a way that I start sort of sensing, okay, that's, that's I have a, another interest, which is to reduce, you know, reduce this, this, the number of hours I'm working or the type of phone calls at night, for example. I, that, that, that's, 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 I don't want to go there, that's out. So two things, uh, on one hand, when you're completely, you know, not resisting. Okay. I think last time I talked about you're living, in a, you're living in a group setting and people aren't washing their dishes. Okay, fine, I can wash the dishes, you know. Wash the dishes, I'm not. So 
the body mind isn't isn't resistant. It's like, yeah, I'll do it. No problem. Okay, I can do this. Well, there is uh, this additional meeting that I need to go. To. Yeah, sure, no go. You know, no problem. So it's, it's in this this being available and and also being there. You know, fully there. Not no psychological resistance. That's very helpful. You know, in because. It's always possible to find some psycho psychological resistance about anything. Okay, my Maserati is great, but shit, it's yellow. I would have liked a red one or a black one or a gold one. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's, you can always find within the mind some complaining argument, you know. Yeah, my partner is great, but heck, they snore, whatever, I mean, whatever you know. <laughs> Uh, there is that tendency within within you know, the personal self to find an issue. Uh, we need to be watchful about that tendency. At the same time, at the same time, you know, we may be a happy working 18 hours with something we completely love, or we may be unhappy working six hours with something that, you know, so I just want to work five hours with doing that. So then we work towards in that direction. We work in the direction to of, of reducing our workload from six hours to five hours. It may take a while because there may be commitments. You know, we don't, I mean, you may have some situations where you have to wait until the end of the semester to, you know, submit, you know, so this, in a way, there is both an inner work and an outer work. The inner work is the noticing the inner tendencies. Not just about work. I mean, you, you, you find those inner tendencies about the right of things, tendencies of finding issues, finding problems. And it's like a, a dissatisfaction. And it's seeking something else, you know, this tendency about anything, many things. So that would be the inner work. And the, the outer work is, is in your life, in your world, in, in your activities. To have a, a harmonious, a harmonious way. So, in a harmonious way doesn't mean, you know, it's all always the same day. You know, if it's like one color, you know, one shade of pink. No, a harmonious way is, is, is activity. There is up and down and this and that. But overall, overall, it's okay. Well, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yesterday, boy, yeah, I had to make a couple of, you know. Had to maybe I was having lunch and I had to interrupt my lunch to take a conference call about some issue that needed to be resolved. And my wife had prepared lunch and we were so excited to be sitting together. But big deal, you know. So overall, it's okay. You will find that in your in your life. As you are less and less living out of the old paradigm of being Patrick, being this person, being the body mind, that your life, not just your inner peace, but also your life will become more sweet, more harmonious, more flowing, flowing. They go hand in hand. But you can't bring harmony to your life by looking at your life and trying to find the best way in your life. You will find harmony in your life by looking at your beliefs and your assumptions, which are, which are ancient, ancient. 
about yourself, about life, about work, about all sorts of things, looking at these assumptions. And once you you opened that that dimension, once you start exploring the dimension, which I'm sure that you have and you are, then you uh, also uh, want, want that same uh, you want that same harmony to uh, arise in your life and it will it will so it, it's it's an exploration. In my case, uh, due to a very strong conditioning, you know, being immigrant and having uh, five brothers to take care of and my mom, etc., there was a lot of uh, muscle to pull, to push, to achieve, to. Um, so, it, it it took quite a quite a while to arrive to a sweet life, you know. Um, but from the onset, uh, from a very young age, I was interested in self exploration. Somehow, God tapped me on the shoulder, and I I felt that tap on the shoulder. And so I looked in that direction, purely via grace. It was God's doing, not my, not my own. And but yet, it, it took many years of. Uh, I was open, open to, to the love, to the ease of being, to the joy, to the success for everybody, to the harmony for everybody. Uh, let me just do one. And uh, and yet it, you know, it took it took a while, it took a while. So uh, in some cases, in my case, it was a lot of you know, not that I was patience, but somehow patience patience was part of. The process, uh, but I've always been impatient. I'm more like <laughs> I was the fellow that would blow blow uh, blow his fuse. Uh, among my brothers, I was the one that would blow his fuse ahead of ahead of everybody else. But yet, uh, there is something to be said for for. Patience. So I mean to be open, you're open to infinite possibilities, which, and of course, the sweet possibility, the possibility of harmony. And of course, always is the good, the good for all. So I don't know much of the details of you know your situation, Patrick. So I'm talking sort of generically, I'm not sure if I'm Maybe I may be talking around your question, but no, I I, I feel like you um, you hit the nail on the head, and I I um, I don't know. Like last year during COVID, it, it felt like a different situation where a lot of these kids really needed someone to be there as a human being rather than as a as an authoritarian figure and this year it feels totally different you mm. know and and so in in some ways i feel like um the reason i was brought to that job was 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 for that and the, and that that no longer applies kind of thing mm -hmm. and uh and that i'm just hanging on to it um but no and i and my father was a workaholic as well and and so there is a big part of of me that 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 it, it, 
that deals with that conditioning mm. as well. So, so I appreciate your answer very much. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So remain open. Well, welcome it all. See how it unfolds. Welcome the unknown. Be open to the unknown. Let's see. Invite. Invite God to whisper to you and direct you. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of authority, it's, it's very helpful for the youngers to perceive somebody's authority. Uh, they feel protected by their authority as long as there is also the love, you know, the, the listening, the understanding. So it's, uh, it's comforting, it's reassuring, you know, uh, they can be free because they feel safe uh, and they feel uh, not threatened by the authority. So there is an authority that is more functional and necessary and not personal. That's sort of, we understand, we understand it. We understand it's, it's, uh, it's need, you know, it's, it's purpose. Uh, many of us, you know, speaking for myself, but I think many of us uh, have experienced authority that doesn't come out, come from a place of love, you know, doesn't have somehow it's a some personal, a personal sort of authority. And we protect ourselves against this sort of authority via our ego. We use our ego as a defense, you know. So I perceive a certain threat and I protect myself from that threat by being me, by being, you know, whatever being, I could be the weakling that's hiding or I could be the combative one, whatever. But in both cases, it's, a, it's an ego. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, a psychological aspect that is necessary for our protection. To be, we have to be careful, especially with the younger ones, not to um, reinforce some of the patterns that they've brought in from their from their home or from other places. It's very hard. It's a tricky thing because we're all we're all different. So in the classroom, you're dealing in it's not a homogeneous group of people, but the love in your heart is wins all if there's something within within you you know whatever you say if within your heart there is love even if there is a stern expression uh but you you're coming from you know from the good of all including yourself of course uh, then it's, it's something that works within that Thank you, Magdi. All right, Magdi. Well, good luck with this. That's that's uh, in a way, you know, being in the village, you know, being being in being in life, you know, living living life and living your understanding. It's it's a lived living exploration, and uh, it's. It's an important uh, aspect, uh, you know, for us in our inquiry and in, in our uh, exploration of, of peace and happiness. It's, it's an important part of our life. Yeah. Okay, cool, Patrick. Nice chatting with you. Okay. Oh. Oh. Isaac, you, I see you wrote something here. 
you said, what or how is it to be fully engaged in the village? Routines, relationship, and responsibility can make you crazy. Well, every moment, every moment, Isaac, is a fresh moment. Every moment is a fresh moment. Uh, so, Let's see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, okay. Just gonna, I think there's, okay. I just muted you for a second, Isaac, because if there was an echo coming from your uh, computer, but you can unmute yourself whenever you want to speak. So, so every moment is a fresh moment, right? Like this moment right now. So, when you say routine, okay. So we wake up in the morning, we wash our face, we brush our teeth. We say, okay, it's a routine. Uh, we cook breakfast. We go down to the village to do something. We come back home. We wash the dishes, we make the bed. <laughs> Routines, yes, they're routines. And yet, and yet, we're never repeating anything. Every moment is a fresh moment. Like these words I'm speaking right now and this hearing, what you're hearing right now, uh, there is no past to it. It's completely fresh. So rather than looking at life as a routine, which is sort of living in your thoughts and whatever, thinking, oh, well, I've already had breakfast yesterday, I'm having breakfast today, I already made my, my bed yesterday and the day before and the day before. I mean, rather than being in this, this uh, just, just here you are, here you are, just, you know, making the bed, pulling the sheets, stacking the sheets, whatever, doing the pillows. Here are fresh, fresh moment. You know, the, the sun is shining through the window. It's, you may hear the birds or you may hear the traffic. Fresh moment, fresh moment. So in the, in the freshness of the moment, there is no routine. And yeah, I mean, you would drive to work, we go into traffic, you know, but still, it is a fresh moment. So when we when we're open, uh, we're not we're not like into the oh well, God, the same traffic, oh, the same traffic, the same traffic. That's in the that's that's in the thinking, you know. That's in the realm. But it, but there is another dimension that's available to us. Yes. So I would say, in terms of the routines, let's let's explore a fresh moment. Every moment, a fresh moment. And every moment is perfect and complete as it is. This moment is perfect and complete as, as it is. Why not? Perfect and complete as it is. So, is, there may be an old thought that says, no, something is missing. Fine. Something is missing, something is missing, something is missing, fine. What I'm suggesting, and let's explore a new idea a new theme. The theme is this moment is just perfect. It's not perfect because it's sunny day. It's not perfect because uh, uh, I have a lot of money in the bank. No, it's perfect as it is. This moment is perfect as it is. Perfect as it is. And in this moment, there is no separation. It's perfect as it is, and there is no separation. Relationship, What's, what is relationship? Here is relationship right now, Isaac. This is relationship. 
Relationship is not a story. Relationship is love. Here is relationship right now. This is relationship. Relationship is not, oh, do I have friends? Do they love me? Am I popular? Or who am I gonna call when I call people? Do they, you know, do they invite me to dinner? Blah, blah, blah. It's not relationship, that's thinking. That's relationship with thinking. <laughs> Relationship is, we are never, never, never out of relationship. We are never out of relationship. So here is a new model, a new model. The old model is, oh, I don't have good relationships. I don't have good friends. Where are my friends? Where are my relationships? There's a new model. The new model is I am never out of relationship. I am never out of relationship. I am always in relationship. The relationship of one. I am the relationship of one. One. Me and you in this moment, we are one. Me and my breath, we are I'm one. Me and the perception, the perception, whatever perception is, are one. So the relationship of 100%. So I'm always 100% relationship. It's 100% relationship. So the question, what is it to be fully engaged in a relationship? Is to be 100% relationship. No separation. No separation. In relationship, I and you, we are one. You are myself, I am yourself. We are one self. I relate to you not as Isaac, Isaac is the form of the body, the name of the body. I love you, not your body. I have no issue with your body. You could be eight years old, you could be 40 years old, you could be 20 year old body. I love you. The you that I love is the I that loves. The you that I love is the I that loves. The same I, because the I that loves is love itself. Only love can love. Non-love, non-love cannot love. Only love can love. So when I say I love you, it is I love which loves you itself. Love you as itself. If I love you, then you are myself. I cannot love you as something separate from myself. Love is a meeting, is a is a meeting where the two are one, the two are one. The sexual act is the two coming one. This is a symbolic act in the, in the, in the, in the human experience where the two become one. So this is really what relationship. Relationship is love. I am never out of relationship. And it's a relationship of one. And my responsibility? My responsibility is to live this understanding is to live this understanding, to return to this understanding, to welcome this understanding, to, to, to tell God, I am available for this understanding. I am the, uh, the door, I am the door in your hand. You are the baker and I am the door, the door in your hands. You are the baker, I am the door in your hands. My responsibility is I am the door in your hands. My responsibility means, what is my response? Responsibility comes from the response. I respond to you. My responsibility to you is to respond to you as myself. The correct respond, response to you is, oh no, I love you when you are, uh, when you take me to dinner, when you, when you buy me the serdat, when you tell me how good I am but I don't love you when you don't tell me how great I am. No, that's not a good response to you because this response to you is puts a condition on you. It tells you, you are not free. You are not free. So in my response to you, I tell you, I am, you, you are free. My freedom is your freedom. I have no conditions upon you, nor do I welcome any conditions from myself or from anybody, because 
all, all conditions come from God. So I am available to God's conditions, which whatever they are, I know them within my heart. I know them within my heart. So I, I am not made crazy by the routines, by relationships, by responsibilities. No, no, no. I am not separate. I, I am not a body mind. I am the love. I am the truth. I am the way. You know, Jesus said, I am the way. Uh, he, he was speaking about, about that, about the reality, of, the reality of I, you see, which is different from I am Magdi, I am Isaac, I am this, I am good, I am alone, I'm not, you know. No, which is different from I am the body, you see. You see, the body can be alone. The body can be uh, alone in the kitchen, alone in the living room, or, or it could be in a, with a lot of other people in the party, you know, but still alone. Body is a body. A body is like a, an object, it's an object, it's an object. I have no problem with the body, but I am not going to identify myself with the body, you see. So, because if I identify with myself with the body, then I am separating myself from the universe, you see. And I'm separating myself from you, because my body, the body Magdi, is not the body Isaac. So I separate myself from you. What sort of love is that? What sort of life is that if I separate myself from you? You think that's happy? No, of course it's not happy. It's not happy. So I don't want to, I refuse to separate myself from you. I do not separate myself from you. So therefore, I do not define myself or believe myself to be the body. I don't. Say so no, the body, I experience the body. I perceive the body, the hand, I perceive the elbow, I perceive the I sense, I have a sensation, I perceive a sensation, but I am not the body. I am not the person. See? This way I don't separate myself from anybody or from anything. Okay, okay, Isaac, you are muted, but uh, uh, no problem. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Mighty. Okay, Isaac. Love you. Oh. Okay. Any questions? Okay, well, 
very lovely to be with you all. Thank you, Grace. Esther, hey Esther. Doug, Isaac, Mina, Zoe. Thank you, Magdi. Thank you, Mina. Doug, Kelly, Holger. Thank you. Shiva, uh, Premira. Nice thank to you, thank you, thank you. Premira, Malcolm, Marga, Gisela. Thank you. Lucas. Thank you all. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you. 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 Thank you.